Hi everyone, I'm very excited. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm stoked. Yes, that's the word. I'm stoked that you're here with me today. Um, <laughs> the reason why I'm using the word stoked is because I realize that in all my videos, I always say, I'm so excited. So um, my word for today is I'm stoked that you're here today. I'm gonna be using different um, synonyms for the word excited. <laughs> So I'm very stoked that you're here with me today to be able to share the word of God and just be able to speak um, on this topic and the topic is obedience. Um, I believe in our walk with Christ, God speaks to us and we speak to him and in, in him speaking to us, there are times where we have to be obedient. He gives us instructions and he expects us to be obedient um, and obedience is a key part of um, walking with God because it gets us in the direction where we ought to be. So today we'll be talking about obedience based on 1 Kings chapter 17. And in this chapter we see that um, Elijah has pronounced that there's going to be drought in the land, so there's not going to be any rain. And um, so he flees from Ahab and he goes to a place where a raven is giving him bread and meat and he's drinking from the brook. But there comes a time where the brook is dry and God tells him and he says, um, there's a widow I have instructed to take care of you in Sidon. I need you to go to Sidon. So he's obedient. He leaves where he is and he goes to Sidon and he meets the woman. And this is where it starts. So we'll start from verse 12. The Bible says, as surely as the Lord God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to go take home to make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat and die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day of the Lord. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jar of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Some time later, the son, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. She said to Elijah, what did you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me that my son of my sin and kill my son? And if you continue reading the chapter, um, you realize that Elijah then took the son uh, to the upper room. He prayed for the son and then the son came back to life. Um, so when I was reading the story, there was just, I just had questions. And my first question is that um, when we look at Elijah's situation, Elijah was at a point where he needed somebody to, to provide for him. But then God sends him to somebody who lacks provision. If Elijah needs provision, why would God send him to somebody who lacks provision? Because the Bible says that when Elijah met this woman, this woman was um, gathering her sticks so she can make a fire and make her last meal with her son and prepare to die. So that means that they, they were, this was their last. This was their last meal. They accepted their situation. This is their last meal. We're going to die. So if provision is what Elijah needed, why would God send Elijah to somebody who lacked what Elijah needed? Right? Then my second question, I was just like, wasn't Elijah a little bit selfish? Because this woman is saying, this is my last. But this guy is like, okay, yeah, I get your situation. Go make bread for me first. Allow me to eat first. And then whatever is left, you guys can have you and your son. Say, well, that's a little bit selfish because if you look at this, this woman probably had flour. So instead of dividing the flour or the bread into two, now she's dividing it into three to include Elijah, which means that there's less for her and her son. So this was like painful, like she was giving up her last to feed somebody else. But let's not forget because before Elijah left, Elijah was told, I've instructed this woman to take care of you. So by this woman, Doing what Elijah was do, told her to do. She was acting out of obedience to God. And that made me realize that sometimes when God gives us instructions and tells us what to do, when we look at it from a short-term perspective, 
it's very painful. Because when we look at this woman, if she looked at it from a short-term perspective, she would have figured, if we divide this flower into two, that means there's more food for me and my son, and that means there's more days that we'll be able to sustain, more days to live. But if we divide it into three, <laughs> this is giving me less days to live. So it's painful. So being obedient, when you look at it from a short-term perspective, is not, it's not easy. When we look at Abraham, Abraham was told to be the father of many nations, Finally, God gives him a son. After so many years of begging, kicking, and screaming, then God gives him instruction and says, you need to go and sacrifice your son. Where is... What do I gain today in sacrificing my son? What did the widow gain today, Katabahadis, in making food for Elijah? And God began to make me realize that when God gives you an instruction, God is looking at your situation today God is looking at your situation tomorrow and God is looking at your situation next week. So when God is giving you an instruction, the instruction is supposed to sustain you. The obedience to the instruction will sustain you for much longer than disobedience. Amen. Because if the lady was disobedient, she would have been able to eat for today. But because of her obedience, she was able to eat for today, for next week, for next year. And however long the drought was going to be, she was able to eat. Why? Because she was doing out of obedience. So obedience to God, the key to obedience is realizing that obedience is not for today. Obedience is in the long run. So I don't know what it is that God has instructed you to do to do. But when you look at it right now, in short term, you're looking at it and you're looking, God, this is my last. God, if I let go of this guy, is there another guy that's going to love me better? God, this money, I can't give it as a seed, as a tithe, as an offering. Whatever it is that you want me, I can't do it right now. It's not for today. This is painful. This is painful. And for argument's sake, I began to look and I was like, okay, let's say maybe this woman had survived somehow to figure out the starvation. Maybe there was a rich man who lived somewhere and he had he threw out his food. Maybe they were able to eat out of the garbage. Maybe she would be able to sustain herself through that. But there came a time where her son was sick, the Bible says, and he grew worse and worse and worse. And the only way that the son became whole again. The only way that the son lived to tell the tale was because Elijah, the man of God, brought him back to life. So if this woman had pushed and turned away Elijah, if this woman had not fed Elijah, her son would not be able to survive, even if they were able to beat starvation. So God is saying, be obedient now because my daughter, I know that your son is going to grow ill. My God is saying, be obedient now because you don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know what next week holds. You don't know what next year holds. Amen. So your obedience is not only good for you today, but your obedience is good for you in the long run. So I don't know who I'm speaking to. I don't know what instruction God is giving you. Obedience hurts now, but it's better for you in the long run. Because the Bible says that God is the Alpha and the Omega. He's beginning and the end. He knows the end of anything even before it's begun. So God already sees. So if God is telling you to be obedient today, there's something that he sees that you don't necessarily see that he's telling you to be obedient. Um, I remember there was a time um, in my life before I like came to uni and stuff and my mind was set on going to Rhodes University. That was it. I'd gone to a Grahamstown Festival of the Arts and I really loved Rhodes. I loved, I loved, I loved it. And I remember like applications, I didn't even need my parents' help to do applications. Key, I didn't even need anyone's help. And I told them, here it is. But for some reason I didn't have peace my parents didn't have peace and they refused for me to go to, um, to, to South Africa to go to university. Um, I was really frustrated. I was very upset and I was very angry at them. In fact, I didn't even speak to them for a month. But I ended up being obedient. And I was like, you know what, we'll do whatever you want. They're like, Canada, Canada for real. And when I look at my life and the decision that I made, and the obedience that I decided to, to, to take.
take. It was just the best decision that I could have made. Because if I had gone to South Africa, there's so many variables that I decided. I was like, oh, there was a time when my parents were broke. Would I have been able to take care of myself in South Africa? You know, there's so many instances. I'm like, I thank God every day for this decision that I made for being obedient to my parents because it's helped me in the long run. So I don't know where it is that you are, what it is that God has told you. I'm telling you now, it's painful now, but in the long run, it's very, it's, it's good for you. It's good for you. Um, so walking with God, you just need to be obedient. Because even when we look at the story of Abraham, the moment Abraham was obedient to God, his long-term benefits, if I'm going to put it that way, he became the father of many nations. The prophecy was fulfilled so be obedient to god that whatever it is that god has planned for you that it may work out in the end and in the long run you can look back and say if i hadn't been obedient to god this would never have happened so that is my message for you today thank you and stay blessed